I know that they were arresting people in Ottawa who have been protesting vaccine mandates earlier today. Foreign Minister, I'd love it if you would address that for us, because that's mm -hmm. um, a deep concern to many in the West, uh, that it seems as if your Prime Minister does not have a handle on the situation. Well, first and foremost, I think uh, we can be proud of Canadians that have um, decided to get a vaccine and, uh, and we're now at a level of 80% for uh, all the population of Canada, kids five years old and up. Um, and also, I think that um, it is, we're now starting the third year of the pandemic, Hadley. Uh, people are tired, exasper exasperated. I, in French, uh, there's a saying where I come from in Canada, which we say people are tanny, they're fed up. And, you know, it is a Nordic country, and January and February are harsh months. And so at this point, definitely the mental health of Canadians is a, something that I have in mind and that we have in mind. Meanwhile, there's a right for peaceful protest in, in Canada, and, uh, uh, and we obviously want to make sure that that right is uphold, but we're past that at this point. And our biggest concern, and my biggest concern as Foreign Affairs Minister, is uh, the foreign interference that is happening in uh, the convoy we're seeing in Canada right now. The disinformation campaign, where it comes from, the financing of it, where it comes from. Um, and so we know that uh, obviously um, there are Canadians that have gone and protested in a peaceful manner, but they're also within uh, the truckers' convoy, some elements that are extremely preoccupying, and that led to also criminal charges, uh, including particularly at the Coutts border between the U.S. and Canada, where uh, there were criminal charges laid up and, and also um, uh, arms that were seized. Do you believe that Donald Trump specifically has a role in what's happening in Canada? Listen, as Foreign Affairs Minister, I won't point out somebody in particular, but we know that there is foreign interference. And that's why also we decided to go ahead and uh, use for the first time in our country the Emergencies Act, uh, which is a important legislation um, that at the same time gives yes authority to the government to act through its executive order, but at the same time that needs support from parliament, and that provides also for a mandatory public hearing after its use. So we know that everything we're doing right now will be under the scrutiny of a public hearing. Yeah. So based but on these are, that- These are major, major, pieces of legislation under this emergency act. I mean, freezing the bank accounts of people who don't want to get vaccinated, that is a rather draconian step, no? Well, it is for people that have been uh, uh, parked in front of uh, Ottawa's parliament and uh, going against um, basically the legislation and also a lot of the bylaws. Um, you know, as a parliamentarian in Canada, and as a minister, I don't have security. None of us have security. We don't need security, usually, in Canada. For every parliamentarian to go to parliament for the last three weeks, we have been escorted by the police to basically continue our work, which we were elected to do. Um, and so this, it's a national security threat. We took, uh, the prime minister took this step very, very, very seriously. And, uh, and we're going ahead. Um, but also, uh, there is strong support in Canada for going ahead because at the same time, we need to make sure that uh, we deal with this national security issue. And more than that, uh, we need to bring more appeasement to the country right now. Do you now. think this is your January 6th moment, in a sense? Um, no, because the posture of the government is not the same. Um, but at the same time, uh, it is clearly the first time that Canada is using this legislation. Um, and this legislation was, uh, ha has strong um, safeguards in it. Uh, the, you know, we're not using uh, neither the, uh, the, uh, the army or the, it is within the, 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 the work of the police officers right now. And we've said many times, uh, 
we agree with uh, the, uh, the, the peaceful protests, at least. But at the same time, residents in Ottawa, in particular, need to be able to continue their lives. Shops need to be open again. Businesses have suffered from this. And it is important that uh, we continue to have a strong democracy. And parliamentarians need to be able to do their work. Yeah.